Today I woke up, went to the bathroom, and got out of bed. I have been checking the mail every morning for a letter from the US military because five years ago I created this, my greatest invention, and the United States military has stolen it from me. They took a bomb, took the bomb out, and put knives on it. I mean, look at this, look at this, look at it. It's the exact same thing. They just put more knives on it. I've been waiting. They've never asked for my permission. They've never sent me a thank you card. The least they could have done is put my name on the rocket. I'm gonna steal back my idea from the US military. So originally, I thought you could just buy really big rocket motors, but you actually need a license to buy anything bigger than this because they claim it's too dangerous. Well, guess what, rocket nerds? I figured out how to make my own fuel, and it's twice as dangerous. I melted down some rocket on low heat, and then added some fuel to it. Then, I poured the mixture of rocket fuel into cardboard tubes. This rocket contains 50 grams of fuel, and this rocket contains 500 grams of fuel. I did some tests, and I quickly discovered there is a fine line between a rocket and a stick of dynamite. <laughs> I cut the fuel into sections and loaded it into the rocket casing. And then I made a nozzle by heating up this little metal pipe on my lathe until it was white hot, and then I jammed this metal cone into the end of it to form a nice nozzle shape. Boom, just like that, you've got a rocket. And I wanna see how fast it will go. I made a 3D model of the knife rocket and it should weigh about 1500 grams or like three pounds. So if I put these steel weights on the end of this rocket, it'll weigh about the same as it should weigh when there's knives on it. Getting ready for my first test. Target's about 200 feet back that way. So I just wanna make sure that it'll work before I buy everything and make everything. Here's the rocket, nothing shot out. The nozzle is still there, but the weights are gone. I wonder where the weights went. Holy sh no way. It went like four inches in the tree, that's wild. After playing back the footage frame by frame, I calculated the rocket to be going over 300 miles per hour. Now I don't really need to explain the next part. I basically just bought some kitchen knives and put them on the rocket. 240 holes, 168 rivets. Do you know how long it takes to make one of these things? I'm talking about making molds from 3D printed parts, casting the knife holders out of aluminum, cutting the handles off the knives, all in the middle of a hurricane. Oh, did you want to drill through hardened steel with the normal drill bit? All right, here's a trick the elites don't want you to know. You can actually sharpen these carbide tipped masonry bits and use them to drill through hardened steel. Anyway, I made six rockets. So I was trying to figure out how to launch the rocket, so I built this model to see if it'll work. I attached a tube to the rocket and suspended it on a cable. So if I just placed the target under the cable, the rocket would only ever halfway hit it. So I fixed that by holding up the end of the cable with a smaller cable, so the rocket will fly down here, break the smaller cable, and go right through the target. Perfect hit every time. Well, I haven't tried it yet, but <laughs> let's try it. Three, two, one. Whoa! It went right through it! So now I need to find somebody with a lot of land and trick them into thinking that these rockets are perfectly safe. And I can't believe he fell for it. Oh, for what? Oh my God, I said that out loud. Anyway, thank you, Derek, for letting me use your property. So here's the setup. On this side, this is the launch section. And 400 feet down that way is the target area. It's the same setup as my tests, but scaled up to 400 feet, and I'm using high-strength Dynama for the cable and paracord for the breakaway. Now, I know I joke about safety a lot, but I have taken every precaution to make sure that this experiment is 100% safe. Most importantly, the knives on the rocket make it extremely nose-heavy and aerodynamically unstable. So without the string to guide it, the rocket would just spin like this, end over end, through the air, and eventually just drop out of the sky within a few hundred feet. And that's fine because there's nothing in that direction for, like, a couple miles. So uh, let's try the first experiment. I think I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. When I press this button, the rocket should go off. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa! I think it worked! You think it worked? I think it worked! So did we hit it? No, something hit the pumpkin. There's some cans that are exploded. We must have just nicked the top of it. All right, here it comes on the high speed. Oh, it worked perfectly. It was going perfectly straight. It broke the rope just like I hoped. It nicked the pumpkin and I lost track of it there. Honestly, this was a little too easy for the rocket. So for the next test, we're gonna try something tougher. In my last video, we cut a toy car in half. In this video, I wanna try cutting a real car door in half. I raised it up on some cinder blocks because last time the rocket hit a little higher than I thought it would. So hopefully we get a nice hit right in the center of this car door. So we're gonna be using this upgraded rocket knife with the carbon steel blades. This should go straight through that car door. Let's not hit a cow. 
Got one more finishing touch to put on the rocket. See, at least I'll give him credit for stealing my idea. Here we go. Three, two, one. Holy I think crap. we nailed it, dude. Did you hear that crash? Yeah. Oh my God, we hit it. We hit it, we hit it, oh, we hit it! Did we go through? Went right we went through. through, we went through! Dude. Oh, perfect! I couldn't have asked for a better shot than that. Wait, where's my other GoPro? Is this part of your GoPro? No, it hit the GoPro! <laughs> oh, here's your battery! Oh, no! <laughs> I brought the car door home so I could cut it open and check out the damage on the inside. All right, check this out. One of the blades is still stuck in the center support of the car door. <laughs> Let me get that out. Wow, snapped it in half. But look, another blade made it clean through the center support and it looks like it came out right there. This blade kind of came in like this, barely nicked the inside of the car door like that and then went right through the other side. Cut through the steel cable here and then this one right here. It cut through this like the sheath that the cable was in and then it cut through these electrical wires too. Anyway, I paid a hundred bucks for this car door at a junkyard. It's from like a Cadillac or something. And uh, let's try the next experiment. All right, so we're setting up a new rocket to hit our target down there, which is a bunch of propane tanks and the teddy bear. We're gonna get the teddy bear this time. Okay, three, two, one. It looks like it hit the ground right there and it's still hot on the thermal camera. That's it. Where are the knives? I found a knife right here. The knife's all twisted, look at that. And another one. Oh, that was, this is the one that hit the car door. I also found this part of the knife too. So this was the front, that was the back, and the knife is just shattered. I found the propane tank. No way, way over here? Oh, whoa! It cut the top right off, let me see it. It's sharp, it's like a knife. I came out here early the next day to find out where those first three rockets landed. And while I'm looking for them, future Kevin is gonna tell you about this video's sponsor, KiwiCo. So I've been trying to figure out some ideas. I've been farming for ideas. What can you guys try at home that's not so dangerous? Well, look at this. We've got a fresh batch of KiwiCo crates right here. We've got a bottle rocket, we've got air hockey, and we've got a mechanical sweeper. So KiwiCo creates hands-on projects for kids that are designed to be so much more than just a toy. Their crates are jam-packed full of science, art, and engineering, and contain none of the harmful explosions pain, or arson that you would find in my videos. This rocket uses a chemical reaction between baking soda and citric acid to produce gas which shoots the rocket up into the air. You know another chemical reaction that makes a lot of gas? Bombs! <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? Also, real rockets. When I was a kid, my parents would buy me kits just like this. And honestly, I think that buying me kits like this helped spark my interest in science and creativity. I just think building stuff like this is really good for kids when they're growing up. All of KiwiCo's projects are designed by experts and everything you need comes in the box. This includes all of the supplies, a booklet teaching more info on the crate subject, and kid-friendly instructions. KiwiCo crates are great fun for the whole family and they make an awesome gift. So go ahead down to kiwico.com backyard and get started on your Kiwi co crate today. Uh, well, after a quick search, I found the rockets that we launched yesterday, or what's left of them. Anyway, let's try the next experiment. We've set up a little living room example right here. So we've got your wall, we've got your TV, and then we've got your comfy little chair. And in the chair, we have put Mr. Hamburger, and he's going to be our crash test dummy. We got the rocket set up way down there, and it's going to come right through all of these things, hopefully. This is also a very special rocket. <laughs> Yes! We hit it! There's so much going on. The chair is on fire. Look at the TV right there. It is just, what happened to it? Where's Mr. Hamburger? Wow, look at that. Look at a perfect entrance hole right there and then a perfect exit hole right there. Like you can see all the blades and everything. This is, a... <laughs> these rockets are so powerful. This is a piece of the TV right here. A piece of the TV embedded in the table. 
it got pushed through the table. I'm not even kidding. This looks like a war zone. These rockets are just so ridiculously powerful. They're going at like 450 miles an hour by the time they reach the end of this table here. Like, wow. You found the rocket? Oh my God. Look at Thomas's face. It's been like welded to the metal. It's still there. <laughs> the aluminum casting I made to hold the blades, it kind of cracked a little bit there and there and there. But I mean, one of the blades survived. The nozzle got shot out somewhere. This is, this is too much for me. So I made six rockets and the first four worked perfectly. The next two. Did we hit it? Did it work? It came off the cable. No. Rocket number five burned through the motor casing and I think it melted the duct tape. So it just shot off out of control. I didn't tighten the cable enough for rocket number six. So it hit the ground, the fuel on the inside exploded and it burned a hole through the casing right here. It ended up in a tree and it's still in pretty good condition. So I went to Walmart, I bought 12 more knives. That night, I made two more rockets. So I come out the next day to fire off rocket number seven and it came so close. Everything was going perfect, but it veered off the track at the last second and it hit the support beam right there. And I don't know exactly what happened to rocket number eight, but it flew off the cable and hit this pine tree about 15 feet up. I made one more rocket. This is personal, I need this. I have one more rocket and I am going to hit the fridge this time. This time, we are going to hit this fridge, we're gonna hit this washing machine. Let's light that gas. Okay. Three, two, one. Yes! yes! I could tell it worked right away by the sound of the fireball and I could see a flaming propane tank spinning away. I am so glad that this finally worked. Like everything was going so good and then four rockets missed right in a row. It all worked out in the end though and it was totally worth it. We did it. Oh my God. We're gonna be arrested, but we did it. Look at this. We did it. Let's do a quick damage survey. Let's start with this propane tank. Still live. Here's the rocket right here. So the aluminum casting was pretty broken. You can see right there, split right down the center. So the rocket was totally destroyed. Here's a shelf from the fridge. And look at this, there's a bunch of broken like wires from the shelf. So I think that this rocket came in and one of the blades hit the shelf right there because the blade is still stuck in the shelf. Over here on the dishwasher, we didn't go through the dishwasher. And I think that that's because the shelves caught the blades so good. The rocket came out sideways when it came out of the freezer. Oh, here's one right here. So this one was cut totally cut right in half. Like, that's amazing. Shooting the rockets was way more fun than cleaning everything up, but this part of the freezer was too cool to throw away. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video a lot and I'll see you next time.